Welcome, new recruits. Now entering the Star Room. Mira Karen, our audience is here. Eager and curious astronaut trainees. Already? Great, thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Karen Nyberg. I'm an engineer and an astronaut. I have spent 180 days in space. That's six months. Welcome to our star, our space training augmented reality room. This is where we learn to survive in space. As you can imagine, living and working in space is a lot of hard work. It's a lot of hard work by a lot of people. Being an astronaut was the most amazing experience for me. It was full of so many amazing adventures. One thing I can say is the Earth is just absolutely beautiful. And I think every time I go to look out the window, everything looks a little different. Every time you pass over someplace, it looks a little different. OK, trainees, first things first our rocket ride to space. Sloth, load the centrifuge simulator. A sloth? I love sloth. Let me introduce you to our Space Life Operations Trainer for Humans, Sloth for short. He may be a little slow, but he has a keen eye and a very, very sharp mind. Welcome to the centrifuge! Wow! Cool room! What happens in here, astronaut Nyberg? As the centrifuge accelerates more and more, it produces more and more gravity. Acceleration equals gravity. Albert Einstein proved that over 100 years ago. That's right, Sloth. We astronauts sit in the far end. As it goes faster and faster, we get pushed back hard, usually to around 8 Gs. 8 Gs means 8 times the force of normal gravity. Just imagine trying to get up off your couch if you weighed 8 times more than normal. <gasps> the centrifuge prepares us for spaceflight. Two, one. rocket ride into space, astronauts experience about three to four Gs. It's a wild ride, a bit scary, but we train a lot and are very confident in the teams of engineers and scientists who design and build the rockets. When we come back to Earth during re-entry, we can experience eight Gs as we descend very fast through the thick atmosphere of Earth. Karen, can I show the astronaut trainees the roller coaster video? Sure. A roller coaster is somewhat like a center view. The acceleration people feel is exactly the same way the force of gravity pulls you towards the Earth. This roller coaster can achieve 4.5 Gs. we go up in an elevator, we all experience more gravity. Okay, a tiny bit on most elevators, but some fast ones, you can actually feel 20% more gravity. Does that mean you'll weigh 20% more? Yep, and when you accelerate down, you would weigh a tiny bit less. Centrifuge is critical in preparing astronauts for what their bodies feel like on liftoff and re-entry. But in space you're weightless. You float. How do you train for that? It's like you read our mind. Next stop, the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory. The what? The space pool. That's a huge pool. Cool. It's 
202 feet long, 102 feet wide, and 40 feet deep. It holds over 6 million gallons of water. Neutral buoyancy means that in this pool, nothing sinks to the bottom nor floats to the top. Sure, water is obviously not the same as the vacuum of space, but by using a set of weights and flotation devices, we create weightlessness. It works great, and this is how we train astronauts for living and working in space. This huge pool contains a full-scale replica of the International Space Station. That's right. These astronauts are getting real experiences that are just like being in space. They wear the same bulky spacesuits and the same gloves. The whole idea is to get them accustomed to the same tough and tricky conditions that are found in space. After 100 hours of training in the space pool, a spacewalk will be like a cakewalk. I don't know about a cakewalk, Sloth, but living in zero-g is definitely a fun challenge. Everything is so different than Earth because everything floats, even us. From eating and drinking to working and research and moving from room to room. All of it provides a very unique experience. Check out this special treadmill that astronauts use to work out. To prevent muscles from getting mushy, we need to exercise for over two hours every day. One astronaut ran the entire Boston Marathon from space, 26.2 miles. Um, how do we go to the bathroom in space? <clears throat> Very carefully, that is definitely something we do not want floating around. We have to make sure that we're held securely on the seat and then suction hoses well, they suck everything away. <laughs> okay, moving on. Another question, perhaps? Sure. What would happen if you ever forgot your spacesuit? Great question. Sloth, activate Space Without a Spacesuit Simulation 101. Sure thing. Stand by. Congratulations. You made the journey to space, 62 miles above the Earth. Unfortunately, you forgot your spacesuit. First, air inside your body quickly escapes. The oxygen that doesn't escape causes your body to expand. All the water inside you vaporizes into gas. And with no air, and therefore no air pressure in space, you balloon to twice your normal size. Your skin stretches, but is so durable, it prevents you from being torn apart. Water in your eyes and tongue evaporates, and they bulge too. You get severely sunburned from intense solar and cosmic radiation. You pass out in 15 seconds from lack of oxygen to your brain. You then freeze solid in about 12 hours. As the vacuum of space is 455 degrees Fahrenheit, below zero. That wasn't very perky, but that's why we train our astronauts so extensively. Exactly, Sloth. It's very important to note that no astronaut has ever forgotten their spacesuit since 1959. NASA's training of astronauts for living and working in space has been exceptional. Speaking of astronauts, let's wander over to the Hall of Space Heroes for a blast from the past. This is a very impressive history of spaceflight. Wow, is that the monkey that went into space? You're right. Ham was the name of the astro chimp. He went into space three months before America's first astronaut, Alan Shepard. 
Did you know that fruit flies were the first life forms in space? And since then, a wide variety of life forms have been sent up to test the harsh space conditions. From dogs, cats, rats, and turtles, these brave creatures helped pave the way for human exploration. By the 1960s, America had an intense space race with the Soviet Union. Yes, we did, Slav. It started with President Kennedy's goal to land astronauts on the moon and return them safely to Earth. That was the race. First came the Mercury program with one astronaut in the capsule. Then Gemini had two people. And finally, the Apollo program carried three astronauts. On July 20th, 1969, America did it. Neil Armstrong became the first person to walk on the moon. Yeah, I'm gonna step off the lamp now. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. He was soon followed by 11 other astronauts who left footprints and moon buggy tracks. After Apollo came Skylab. Then the space shuttle program. And today we have the International Space Station and private companies like SpaceX. As of today, over 600 people have flown into space. But soon, the number of astronauts could be over a thousand. Maybe some of you. Maybe someday, Every human will get a chance to experience space travel. Not just the astronauts. And billionaires. NASA's latest mission is Artemis, which plans for astronauts to walk on the moon, including the first woman and the first person of color. Artemis may also establish a lunar base to launch human missions to Mars. Mars? Did you say Mars? Mars is the next big step in space travel. The possibilities on the red planet are exciting. Check out our Mars Vision Center. Welcome to Mars. Thanks to many spacecraft and cool robots like me, we have already discovered fascinating facts here. We have, Sloth. Mars is best described as a cold desert. Average temperature is about 70 degrees below zero. And the atmosphere here is mostly carbon dioxide. So humans can't live on Mars? They can. But you definitely need a spacesuit, an advanced one that is like a mini spacecraft. This will provide everything an astronaut needs to live, explore and build on the red planet. Astronauts will be able to bounce more on Mars. The force of gravity is only 38%. This means if you weighed 100 pounds on Earth, you would weigh 38 pounds on Mars. Someday, there could be habitation units like astronaut apartments places to eat, sleep, and go to the bathroom. That'll be a little easier with at least some gravity. There'll be solar rays to collect energy, a landing zone for supplies, and new people like engineers, scientists, construction people, and then who knows? And look out for SEVs, Space Exploration Vehicles. These will widen our exploration range on the red planet and help us build new science laboratories and food production areas. There's MAV, Mars Ascent Vehicle, to take people back to Earth. And then there could be an entire dome city, or cities, on Mars.
Imagine a green city on a red planet. Of course, the mystery about life on Mars will be explored. We have been so curious about that possibility. We know that Mars long ago had plenty of water. So, did small microbes ever get started here on the red planet? That's far out, but could we go farther, like to a star? That's a good question, I don't know. Stars are incredibly far away, unbelievably far compared to a planet. Currently, it takes seven months just to travel to Mars. To arrive at a star like Sirius would take 200,000 years. But that's with present day rocket fuel. What if we used a solar sail or a light sail? It would use photon radiation pressure from our sun to push large, ultra-thin mirrors to high speeds. Solar sails have been researched and are plausible. They could happen within 50 years. Being so lightweight though, a solar sail could not carry a crew of astronauts. Some future day, there may be powerful spacecraft working like tiny stars using nuclear reactions. A fusion spaceship would only take 200 years to arrive at Sirius. These nuclear starships convert tiny amounts of matter into amazing amounts of energy. Einstein discovered this energy, mass connection, in his famous equation E equals mc squared. Surviving that trek would take generations. Space babies, whole families born and raised on a journey to a star. Or they may use cryogenics, where human bodies are preserved for a long time when scientists freeze human cells, then slowly thaw them when they reach their destination. It's all theoretical. Kind of a distant future idea. They could build faster starships using antimatter explosions. This fuel works by annihilating protons and antiprotons. These explosions could propel a craft 50 times faster than a nuclear one. Maybe even achieve half the speed of light. You could get to Sirius in 17 years. Again, theoretically. Well, everyone, you've experienced a little bit what it's like to survive and thrive in space. How many of you still want to be an astronaut? I do, I do. Me. Ooh. Sign me up. Yeah, let's go. Me too. Great. Well, then I think it's time to start the next part of your training, a pop quiz. Are you ready, Sloth? A quiz? What? A test? Now? Come on, you guys. It takes a lot of hard work and dedication to become an astronaut. Here is the first question. Which physical activity prepares astronauts for their time in zero gravity? Swimming? Lifting weights? Running? Or all of the above? The answer is todos, all the above. That's right. An astronaut has to be in tough physical shape. People in space must be healthy to do experiments and perform rigorous tasks like a spacewalk. Here's the second question. Astronauts training focus on which of the following areas? Language, survival training, medical procedures, or all of the above. Again, todos, all of the above. We astronauts have to know a lot of different things to survive in space. Education is crucial. Astronauts need to be dedicated and enthusiastic learners. And <laughs> they need to learn to never forget their space suit. Great job, everyone. 
but Sloth and I need to get ready for the next group of trainees. Thank you so much for your time and attention. We wish you the best wherever you may go. Maybe to space, to the moon, to Mars, maybe even Pluto, or somewhere right here on planet Earth. And remember, dreamers make science fiction science fact. There's no limit to what you can achieve. Enjoy the ride, everyone, and everywhere you go along the way. So long. Adios, amigos. Above.